Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here today. My name is Madeline Rogers, and the title of my keystone is The Writings on the Bathroom Wall, a study of Latronalia on a college campus. Now, Latronalia is the academic term that's used to refer to bathroom graffiti. And Latronalia, even though the term wasn't coined until the mid 20th century, Latronalia has actually existed as early as the ancient Romans, where archaeologists actually found writings on the latrines at Pompeii, um, and evidence of Latronalia has existed throughout history since then. Now, the, coin, the, the term Latronalia was coined by Alan Dundies in 1966, as part of a sort of revolution for the academic study of Latronalia. Um, so you can see there were a number of studies published around this time. Fields such as psychology, anthropology, linguistics, and sociology all became interested in the phenomenon of Latronalia during this time. Now, as we can all guess, the world has certainly changed in the decades since then. And so I wanted to take a look at modern Latronalia for my project. So my study focuses on Boston University in Boston, Massachusetts. In particular, it focuses on graffiti found in the College of Arts and Sciences building. This is due in part to the fact that my attempts to find Latronalia in other spaces on campus were unsuccessful, um, although it was largely due to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. So due to the pandemic, the intended scope of this project had to be slightly limited because of the public health concerns, so I was able to pull graffiti samples from my own personal photographic collection that I have been gathering over the past four years of my time at Boston University as a student in the College of Arts and Sciences who uses the women's restroom. My samples have all been pulled from those locations. And I actually feel that for the scope of this project, this helped me because it further defined the demographic that I was studying of who was accessing and who was possibly writing this graffiti. And since I'm a member of this demographic, I feel I was able to offer more insight behind the importance of these writings. So for the sake of my project, I have defined two realms that contribute to the phenomenon of Latronalia. The first realm is experience. So the actual experience of being in the restroom, seeing and writing the graffiti and also content. So what's being written about or in what manner? So I want you all to take a moment and like close your eyes or don't, um, but try to imagine be yourself in a public restroom. What might you be seeing? What might you be hearing? What might you even be smelling? And when I asked you these things, you may have giggled to yourself. Um, and it's because I'm breaking a societal taboo by, by talking openly about these things. So our society has a taboo around all of the activities related to the public restroom, the body parts that are exposed there, the things you do in there. Um, and so the public restroom became designated as this space where we can break this taboo. And it provides a sense of privacy in the public sphere. So you need privacy to complete these actions, but but you're still in a public arena. So this creates what I have referred to as a liminal space, which is an anthropological term that's used to refer to a sense of in-between. Now, due to the liminal nature of a public restroom, the bathroom user is afforded near complete anonymity while they're in that restroom stall. The individual is no longer tied to the thing that they wrote the moment that they leave the stall. So this leads me into a discussion of qualia, uh, which refers to the physical manifestation of the text. So where specifically was it written? What was it written with? How large? And in what color ink? Um, all of these things can tell the readers and me as the researcher more about the author's intentions behind the writing because we don't know who the author actually was. And so we turn to these kind of context clues to, to draw more meaning out of the writings. And so with that, I would like to introduce you to some of the major topics I saw being discussed in the women's restroom graffiti. And we'll use some of these guidelines to discuss a few examples. So the first major topic I identified in the women's restrooms was mental health, both the expression of struggles with mental health, but also advocacy for better mental health. So I think both of the, these sides of the coin can be seen really well in the example on the left. The author originally wrote, I am struggling, I feel alone, but then they went and crossed out the negative terms, struggling and alone, but they did so in a way that you're still able to understand what the original text was. They could have 
completely scribbled out it out to make it illegible, but they wanted the reader to still see the original intention of the writing, and then they replaced it with more positive terms, terms like fighting and supported. And so this author both took the time to express a struggle with mental health, but then they flipped that and they turned it into a more positive light, advocating for ways that people can reframe their thoughts to, to kind of feel better about their mental health state. So here are a few more examples of mental health. The image on the left reads feeling extra worthless today to which somebody responded RT or retweet, which is slang for me too. And I think it's worth noting that the examples I have shown you that express struggle were able to, were written in such a way that they were able to be replaced. So the first example on the previous slide, they were able to cross out the negative words and the writing on this slide was written so faintly that as you can see, it was fading with time. And now I wanna contrast that with the examples on the right. The first one reads, you're okay. And the second one reads, it's completely okay to not be okay. Now, both of these were written with much more intention. The you're okay was actually written like really carved into the paint. And so it was appeared very dark and it was sure, as you can see, it, it's very clear on the screen. It's not fading with time. And the one on the far right was actually written in permanent marker. So you can see that the writers who were advocating for mental health support were writing these things in such a way that they wanted them to last for a long time. They wanted those messages to be clear and be clearly seen by the community that would be accessing these writers later, later on versus the writers who were writing about their struggles were, were with mental health were perhaps writing it in, in less of a like a, a careful way to make sure that it would be able to be understood later on. And so I want to go into my next topic um, and then we'll come back and kind of discuss what all of this means. So the next topic I actually actually identified in the women's restrooms was discussion of politics. So both ideas of activism and also just general progressive ideals. So this example can really be seen clearly on the left in which the person wrote decolonize solidarity with wet sweatin and they drew the image of the raised fist. Now, to be honest, when I captured this image, I didn't know what wet sweatin was. I'm not sure why we needed solidarity with them, but I can say that after capturing this photo, I Googled what they were. It turns out that the Wet'suwet'en is a First Nations tribe in Canada that has been protesting the building of a pipeline through their native lands for the past couple of years. Now, this is a cause that I never would have known about if it hadn't been for this specific piece of graffiti. Reading this and, and understanding that this person was active, uh, um, was like pushing for this cause, um, caused me to become involved with it. And so you can kind of see that the author's intention was met. They wrote about something and the reader was therefore able to educate themselves on that issue. So here's some more writings that had a political nature to them. The image on the left reads, does BU care about its poor students? To which another person responded sarcastically, LOL, no. While neither of these people seem to be outright making any sort of political statement, you can certainly get the sense that there's some sort of feeling about the treatment of a specific demographic of students at Boston University. And while neither of them were willing to come right out and say what their issue was, they were able to connect with each other and say like, I see you we both have this issue and so they were able to see that they weren't the only ones who had that feeling and so that's just one way in which bathroom graffiti kind of creates a community um, the image on the right certainly reads differently it's less conversational and much more of like a slogan or a punchline um, but it, it ends with the very very political punch nazis so this example could definitely fall under multiple different categories like humor even poetry but i placed it under a political category because of the strong sentiment that it closes with. So you might be wondering, okay, why does this matter? Um, I just thought that Latrinalia is so interesting because in the age of the internet and mass globalization, the opportunity for anonymous expression is constantly at our fingertips. Individuals can post anonymously anytime online. So why does Latrinalia continue to exist? I think that Latrinalia offers a sense of true separation from the writing. Once the individual leaves the stall, they're separated from that writing. That writing is no longer identified with that specific person, but rather identified with the general demographic that that bathroom represents. And so their words become a part of the public arena, even though they were already written in privacy. 
So I believe that these writings persist as a way for the individuals to practice community in a space that is intended only to be used by women affiliated with this school. These individuals can express their thoughts, they can express ideas of themselves, and they can even express camaraderie with one another and kind of recruit each other for their own belief systems. And so I think that Latronalia will continue to exist as long as we have these communities that are existing within them. And so even though we can have any other means of expression, I think Latronalia, as we have seen, has continued to exist throughout history because it's a way for people to connect with one another in a way that they can't connect with each other outside of that, that liminal space. Uh, these are the references that I used in my discussion of this topic, and I'd like to thank you all for your time. <laughs>